Clyde, Senator Ludlam. Uh, Mr Acting Deputy President, I also seek leave to take note of uh, some documents that were tabled by Senator Payne a short time ago. Is leave granted? No objection. Leave is granted. Senator Ludlam. Thanks, Deputy President. And I thank uh, the Chamber for the um, opportunity to speak on these documents, and I thank Senator Payne for putting them into the public domain. Um, similar to the issues that Senator Carr has just raised uh, at length on the issue of the east-west uh, link in Melbourne, the documents that I uh, sought the Commonwealth to release relate to the Perth Freight Link, a project that has no social licence in Perth in the southern suburbs that is in fact hated. Let's just put this very clearly on the record. Nobody wants it. It is a proposal that will do absolutely nothing towards its stated objectives of taking container traffic off Leach Highway and other roads, uh, approach roads to the container port north from Mantle. Uh, in fact, quite the reverse, it's likely from our analysis of the project to create a hideous traffic bottleneck in North Fremantle. This so-called freight superhighway between Kenwick, Perth Airport and the southern suburbs out to Fremantle Port is precisely the opposite direction in which we need to be travelling. We should be getting container freight off the roads and onto rail. Not a dollar of investment by this government. In fact, they've pulled funding for freight and passenger rail out of the Commonwealth budget and instead are putting it into obsolete uh, road infrastructure such as this one that we're discussing today. This is a project that has no social licence. It is a freeway to nowhere. The Fremantle Eastern Bypass, to the credit of the former uh, state Labor government, was taken off the planning books. There is now housing being built through that corridor. It's dead. And it was meant to be the feeder road that would take the traffic from the Roe Highway extension. This is a freeway extension that is effectively a road to nowhere smashing through five kilometres of Banksia woodland, seasonal wetlands, destroying Aboriginal heritage sites, ruining neighbourhood amenity, and for what? The state government's own scoping documents the last time it was assessed established that it would have absolutely negligible impact on container traffic on Leach Highway. So those in the city of Melville who are trying to do the right thing by their constituents uh, in diverting traffic to make somebody else's life a misery are in effect backing a project that simply multiplies the problem and takes it somewhere else. Why the hell aren't we getting this container traffic off freeways and onto rail? A simple duplication of the Fremantle uh, rail bridge to give a dedicated access to freight traffic out of the port of Fremantle would de-bottleneck that access to the port and make an enormous difference as soon as that is separated out from the passenger rail network. That is the kind of thinking, kind of network thinking, that we need to be engaged in, rather than this insane drive towards more urban freeways. This is a project that was nowhere near Infrastructure Australia's priority list, and it's been brought forward. And this Commonwealth government has dedicated $925 million to a project that has not completed Commonwealth environmental impact assessment, that has no business case. And the cost-benefit analysis, where the numbers were quite obviously cooked, we've just been told that they can't be put into the public domain. That, if in effect, the Senate and the people of Western Australia and Perth southern suburbs are being told to get stuffed by a government that has committed $900 million of taxpayers' money to ramming this freeway through their neighbourhood and through this priceless area of Banksia woodland. Well, it's not going to happen. It is absolutely not going to happen. People, the local residents, communities and those from across Perth's suburbs have been fighting this proposal for 20 years, and we will continue to do so. But we shouldn't have to be this way. Why are we continually having to confront repetitive acts of utter stupidity? This urban bushland is too precious to lose. People uh, from the Save Bealey Wetlands Alliance and other groups, I want to acknowledge those who are trying to defend uh, the top end of High Street and the approach to Fremantle. Uh, including those councillors and the mayor of the city of Fremantle who have told the state government to go back to the drawing board and put some proper plans together, uh, and those right along this uh, so-called freight corridor who are doing everything they can to bring some sanity back into the debate. $925 million. So apparently there is a secret cost-benefit analysis out there that says there's a five-to-one benefit-to-cost ratio. So for every dollar of the $925 million that Prime Minister Tony Abbott uh, proposes to spend on this obsolete piece of infrastructure, there will be $5 somehow magically generated. So here's what I think 
is likely to be the case. When, with, when this document finally drops into the public domain, when somebody inside the state public service finally slips it under the door of a journalist or an MP, not dropping any hints there, so that this material ends up in the public domain where it belongs, what we will find is a whole pile of made-up numbers. On the cost side, we'll find that they have substantially undercooked the cost of this project. And on the benefit side, we will find that they just magically invented numbers to take the $925 million, which is just the Commonwealth cost component, and another 20 per cent to be carried by the state, and just magically invent four or five billion dollars worth of benefits, as people are wont to do when they start project ideas as a foregone conclusion. This has not been properly assessed, and it will be defeated. It's not a project that Perth suburbs need. So I'm very proud to stand with those campaigners and local residents action groups, the Aboriginal people who have custodianship over the sites in the path of this uh, mad project, and those who are standing up for the urban bushland in Perth suburbs. It's absolutely irreplaceable. We are facing local extinctions of uh, keystone species like the Carnaby's cockatoo and other iconic species on the Swan Coastal Plain, which is being torn to shreds by urban development. And you would have thought, in the teeth of peak oil, with Perth's traffic already paralysing the city, the peak hour now goes for three hours at either end of the day, that a state government utterly moribund, with no business at all before the state parliament, with absolutely no ideas in its second term, that it won apparently without any idea why it was even bothering, is instead proceeding with this project that should have been dead, buried and taken out of the Metropolitan Region scheme decades ago. So we will, in the Greens, be standing up uh, with colleagues in the Labor Party, who have also, to their great credit, opposed this project from the beginning, with our colleagues on the crossbenches and with those right through the community of all political persuasions in Bibber Lake, in North Lake uh, and across the, uh, the alignment for this route through all the way into Fremantle and North Fremantle. We will continue to stand with them until this ridiculous project, this absolute abuse uh, of taxpayer funding and abuse of Infrastructure Australia's process of independent assessment is taken off the books once and for all. Thank you, Senator.